There have been rumors that my company, Golden Boy Promotions, may do a five-on-five against Matchroom Sports, which is run by my buddy, Eddie Hearn. Bruh. We all know Eddie has the worst record as a promoter, mm. and his fighters aren't the cream of the crop. Bruh. But I'm always up for giving the fans a good night of fights under one condition. The fights will be contested in a tiny ring, so nobody can run. And since we have the best matchmaking in Golden Boy, these are the fights I propose. Virgil Ortiz versus Boots, Mungia versus Pacheco, Cepeda versus Shakur, Oscar Duarte versus Devin Haney, and the winner of Ramirez Barboza will take on Jack Catterall. Hell, let's even make it a six on six with me and you, Eddie, Bruh. in the main event. <laughs> I see you've been taking box aerobic classes. Bop, pow. Man, pow. <laughs> so let's give the fight fans what they really want to see. Me kicking your ass. Oh, and Canelo. Fuck, Fuck you. you. Oscar De La Hoya doesn't particularly like Eddie Hearn. I mean, that's a bit of an understatement, isn't it? It's like saying Kamala Harris isn't popular. We already know that. Now... Eddie Hearn was talking about the potential of doing a Matchroom versus Golden Boy 5v5. Again, following on from the success, and I believe it was a success, not for Eddie Hearn, but it was as a success as a kind of event nonetheless, of the Queensbury versus Matchroom 5v5, which I personally enjoyed. I think a lot of other people did, and I think the concept worked very well. I do think, I think it really did work very well. It was a drubbing for, for Matchroom in the nicest way. But the event itself, it was really, it was good. It was a really entertaining event. I really liked it. So, Turk, you talk about the potential of doing more, doing Matchroom versus Queensbury 2, which be open for. Obviously, about Boxer, getting them involved as well, which, again, you know, whether it's against Boxer Queensbury, Boxer Matchroom, etc., etc., etc. Now, Oscar De La Hoya, who does work with the Saudis as well, he's chived in because Eddie Hearn has obviously said we can do a Gold Boy versus Matchroom 5v5. Brilliant. Now, Oscar De La Hoya, in his way I want to call it made a video and of course at the end of the video I might even just leave it in I know he swears in it but it's not well it's apparent but you know it, it's not the worst swear in the world he has a dig at Canelo still I mean if ever a guy is living rent free it's Canelo Alvarez not De La Hoya's head but he's given a list of fights that he wanted he actually wanted to make it a 6v6 not even a 5v5 with him and Eddie Hearn in the main event <laughs> Listen, De La Hoya is an idiot. He says a lot of dumb stuff. And yeah, he's a he's an interesting character, to say the least. But De La Hoya, even now, and he's got to be pushing. If he's not 50, he's got to be pushing 50. Maybe, he, maybe he's already in his 50, I'm not sure. But De La Hoya would absolutely annihilate Eddie Hearn. I mean, De La Hoya... You see, it's hard for me, because I like De La Hoya the fighter. I did, you know, I love going back, even now I still go back and watch some of his fights. I liked him in his prime as a fighter. And honestly, if De La Hoya, if the internet was around, well it was around, but if the internet was as, as it is now, people, De La Hoya in his prime, he would have been one of the biggest stars in boxing today. But like he was one of the biggest stars, if not the biggest, back in the 90s, 2000s. And it's not even just that, you know, he was attractive, he had charisma, he was a good fighter. He was, like, the runs he was going on, especially down in the lower weights when he was fighting that, I think, is uh, 135, 140. I mean, the, the, the little, like, honestly, he was tearing up fights, fighters at that weight. He was brilliant. And even at 147, you know, Tito Trinidad. I remember when he fought Gaddy, and I was a big Arturo Gaddy fan. Like, I remember, obviously, I wasn't, this was even after Arturo Gaddy tragically died. Um... Even watching that fight, you're like, oh my god, this guy is just so much fun to watch. I love watching De La Hoya the fighter. He would annihilate Eddie Hearn if they did if they did ever meet in the ring. But it's an interesting choice of picks he's come with. And I don't I don't just say interesting because the fight will be interesting. I mean I'm saying interesting because do these fighters even work with Matrim and Golden Boy? And, and, and let's start right so he says Jose Ramirez Arnold Barbosa apparently they're going to fight okay Barbosa lost to Sean McComb that was a, a travesty of a decision it was one of the worst decisions this year it was an absolute travesty of a decision he's saying the winner of that versus Jack Cattrall Jack Cattrall is not everyone's cup of tea certainly not he's definitely not going to entertain anybody in fact I mean 
you pack that arena out with some insomniacs, they will be singing his praises once they wake up because he'll put them all to sleep. But I would favour Jack Cattrall against both of them. Then he says Oscar Duarte versus Devin Haney. Listen, last time I checked, Devin Haney, I don't know if he's still at Matchroom, but certainly he's not been best pleased with Eddie Hearn, certainly after the Anthony Joshua situation. I think Devin Haney is trying to do a Canelo where he goes from network to network. Canelo can do it. Devin Haney, I don't think can. Williams a paid versus Shakur Stevenson. I mean, Eddie Hearn suggested that fight. It was a great fight. The volume, and it, it's insane volume Zepeda comes out with. It's absolutely insanity. The insane volume of Zepeda versus the... Listen, Shakur Stevenson is not everyone's cup of tea. To be honest with you, in the whole... Jesus, how many years have I been doing this? Five years of this YouTube channel. I think I've reviewed one of his fights. One. I, I'm pretty sure. I might know. Look, I don't remember every video I did. I mean, there's probably 2,000 videos on this channel. But I think I've reviewed one of his fights in 2000 videos. That's not good. Because there are domestic level fights. I mean, Campbell Hatton I've done more videos on than Shakur Stevenson. And they're night and day. I mean, it's not even, it's, 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 like, it's like two dimensions. <laughs> the chasm between them in terms of skill. But Shakur is just so, I, I, I can't, I can't stay up till stupid o'clock in the morning to bring myself to watch Shakur Stevenson fight. I just can't do it. But him against Zepeda, I think that could bring out the best in both. I would fancy Shakur Stevenson, and he is a tremendous fighter. Let no one tell you otherwise. He might be boring. He is boring, but he's tremendously talented. Now, this one really, I, I scratch my head at this one. Not because of the fight. The fight's pretty good, but Jaime Munguia versus Diego Pacheco. Yeah. Now, Oscar, I know... Quite a lot of things go over your head. It's okay. It happens to all of us. You more so. But the last time I checked, Jaime Munguia was fighting on top rank shows. Now, maybe no one's told you. And if that's the case, you know, I mean, that's just, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But, yeah, he's fighting on top rank shows. And I believe he's actually with top rank. So... I mean, you get an A for effort in terms of matchmaking. It'd be a very, very good fight. But um, listen, I'm not your daddy, but I'm going to break the news to you. I don't think he's a golden boy fighter anymore. Apologies. And then finally, Virgil Ortiz versus Boot Ennis. I mean, that is the fight to make, isn't it? There was rumors going around that that was potentially going to be in the February show in Saudi. I doubt it very much. I think it's just too much of a turnaround for Boot Ennis against Karen this weekend. Even though Karen is nothing to write home about I, I just don't see it happening by February in terms of the card I mean with the exception of Jaime Munguia Pacheco because not that I don't think it's a good fight it's a good fight but again Oscar I don't think he's one of your fighters sorry then yeah it's a great fight it's a great card now who would I pick uh, Catrell definitely against either of those two I would well hmm. let's see what Haney would be like but Fresh Haney I'd pick him I'd pick both those guys by points. I would pick Shakur versus Zepeda. I probably would, yeah, no, I'd edge for Pacheco. In fact, actually, to be honest with you, I'd go with clean sweep matchroom. His only saving grace would be if he fought Eddie Hearn in the main event, then I'd probably, well, I'd definitely I'd pick him by KO. Dosker De La Hoya. De La Hoya's stable is good, and, you know, it's not a terrible stable. I mean, he's got some good talent there, but I think it's a, the case of De La Hoya. I mean, De La Hoya is a smaller promoter, I think, in the grand scheme of things than the likes of Eddie Hearn, even Queensbury. You know, Queensbury stable is a lot bigger. It has a lot of depth in it. De La Hoya stable is not as big. It does have some good... Obviously, you look at the names he listed there, with the exception of I'm Munguia, who I don't totally know why he's fighting. Then, you know, it's, it's actually quite good. He's got a good stable. But against Hearns, and a lot of those fighters are US-based. I think it's a very good stable Hearn has, and I think that uh, he would come out. It, in fact, actually, probably he'd know what it feels like to come out 10 zip. Because I think that, well, I don't think they come 10 zip. I don't think many of them fights would end in knockouts, but I think he would win comfortably. Could be wrong. Let's see. Would Turkey Al Ashik be willing to do that? I mean, it would be, I mean, listen, Frank and Eddie, that was the, you know, the rivalry. We knew De La Hoya didn't particularly like Eddie, but Frank and Eddie, that was the rivalry. It's gone now. I mean, the new rivalry is Frank and Golden Boy. 
Arsenal Frank Gold but Eddie and Golden Boy Eddie and Oscar let's do it I'd love it. that would be a good 5v5 the only problem as I said is some of the matchmaking I mean again I'm it's a quite a strange one he gets Jaime Mungi at the Canelo fight and then he's fighting on top rank the next fight make that make sense just doesn't let me know your thoughts on Oscar De La Hoya on what he's had to say and you know look I doubt that will happen that 5v5 but if it did what are your thoughts let me know in the comments hope you enjoyed it smash the like button if you could hit subscribe of course if you haven't already